Mike, how are you doing? I'm fine. How are you? So I'm in San Francisco and you are all the way across the country in Boston, right? That's right. Cambridge, Massachusetts. Well, uh, so uh, we're investors in your company. We have a set of funds designed for what we call moment of inception investing, which means we look for companies at the very beginning that we think have the potential for huge impact in the world. Uh, with a particular focus in our funds on individual health and through health, the delivery of happiness. So for me, I get to be a health and happiness VC. And uh, and we love what you guys are doing. And we're uh, proud to be investors. We've been proud to be investors from the very beginning. Uh, I agree with Nicole. I think that you guys not only have a great product, but you have a product that's indicative of all kinds of important change in science and uh, individual experience. So why don't we start out with the fundamentals, maybe say a little bit about yourself, but then explain for everyone who's here, what is Epicor and why did you decide to dedicate your time and talents uh, to it? Great. Well, thanks uh, so much for uh, the invite. And uh, it's really a pleasure to be here uh, to talk to you, Mike. Uh, we like to chat offline and uh, it's just even more exciting to talk about things we're, we're passionate about online. So um, I'll give a quick background on, on myself. So uh, I've been in the um, wearable biosensor space for about uh, 12 years now. And um, my educational background is um, a PhD in um, biosensor, um, uh, applications applied to neuroscience. Uh, I got my PhD back in 2008 uh, from MIT and uh, have been living in this space for a number of years now. And, um, you know, it starts out with, um, you know, finding applications that really matter that could change the world. And um, I ended up finding um, a, a really good set of advisors who helped guide me uh, down a path that ended up having um, entrepreneurship and startup companies associated with it, but also maintain a, uh, an anchor point in academia. And um, uh, that's, you know, really specific to my um, uh, uh, evolution over the past uh, 10 years or so. And, um, you know, there's a lot of key people who played a role in that, but that brings me to today. And, um, you know, Epicor Biosystems is a manifestation of a lot of the the, the technology background that I've uh, developed over the years and a lot of the um, um, mentorship that's come with that from uh, professors that are out there like John Rogers, who's a, a mentor of mine. So um, a lot of the work that's um, come out over the past uh, couple of years um, uh, has all been in the wearable um, biosensor space. And uh, it ultimately in 2017 led to the founding of uh, Epicor Biosystems, which um, uh, Mike just mentioned. And uh, so Epicor is uh, is an interesting twist on how we can take wearable sensing to the next level. And, um, you know, we're all familiar with heart rate monitoring, step counting, um, even uh, new metrics like heart rate variability and, and others. Um, we're taking a, a, an approach where we're starting to look at um, the underpinning metabolic and biochemical um, uh, composition uh, of you, of your uh, state of health, your state of well-being, and um, uh, we're developing that technology and bringing it to market to um, create new, uh, not only biomarkers but ultimately in clinical medical domains, uh, potentially endpoints. How do we make outcomes better? How do we um, lead to more individualized uh, types of care. Uh, so that, that's really the gist of, um, of what Epicor is doing uh, as a summary, Mike. And you've got one, right, there. So it might help folks uh, get a sense of this to actually see it because you may have a mental picture of something a whole lot bigger and a whole lot more complicated seeming than the actual uh, product. So can you sort of flash it at folks here on the screen? That's uh, right. Just a let's minute. Get, yeah, let's get that. So up. there it is. It's basically a patch you put on your arm, 
and you're exercising and there it is. You even forget it's there. So in its core, it's very simple, but explain what's going on. So the little lines and all that, uh, you know, this is basically a microfluidics lab on your arm, right? That's exactly right. So embedded in this device are a number of uh, different key uh, components. So one, as Mike just mentioned, are these microfluidic channels uh, that zigzag across the screen. Uh, that uh, piece of technology allows um, a single droplet of sweat during an exercise or if you're taking a shower and you're perspiring without even knowing it, uh, to propagate in through this channel um, in such a way where we can have uh, different chemical reagents embedded inside and measure your sodium chloride levels, um, measure your lactate, your glucose, your cortisol levels, um, all of which could be done on this lab on your skin. Uh, so it's flexible, it's skin-like, which is key to our technology, and you can put it on, forget about it. Uh, if you're Serena Williams, you could go out and uh, exercise and take a reading uh, using a smartphone. Uh, we have, we've developed the algorithms, the app technology uh, to be able to do that and get a snapshot of what your hydration is like. And as you can see, uh, you know, we're a small company. We work with Gatorade and PepsiCo on this technology. They've been superb partners in getting this product out into the marketplace. And um, it's really the first of its kind. It's a microfluidic device that skin interface. So think of it like a skin like patch. So not your typical chest strap or wristband type device. And uh, a lot of years have gone into that technology. It's kind of remarkable. And not only is it remarkable in how small it is, and not only is it remarkable, uh, at least to us in what it's doing, but also you said it very offhandedly and how it's coming to market. So five years ago, if you just did what you did, labs, universities, yeah. These academy, academia, <clears throat> microfluidics. The next thing you would have said is, and our partner is the Mayo Clinic. Our partner is uh, Brigham and Wigman's Hospital. Uh, uh, we're doing this in a trial with the U.S. Army. And you said mm -hmm. uh, Gatorade. So for us, one of the things that got us really excited about you is you're one of the early examples of products because of new science that can be both consumer product and clinical products at the same time. That it doesn't have to be either or, it can be both. And you chose to basically drive the initial stages of the company by partnering with a great big consumer products company, deepening what they offer uh, in the market and getting you uh, in front of or on the bodies of a whole lot more people than you could have done uh, in any other way, that's not the typical go-to-market for a PhD from MIT. Yeah, absolutely. So I can uh, uh, elaborate on how that all happened because you're absolutely right. And actually, if you rewind the tape, um, this technology as it stands, before there was a partnership to carry this product out into the marketplace with a a Gatorade, PepsiCo partner. Uh, we had a publication uh, in late 2016 in Science Translational Medicine, which is a, you know, it's a pretty high impact, high, uh, well-read journal. Um, and, you know, at the time there was no Epicor and uh, we were excited about the work, uh, but there was just a tremendous amount of inbound interest that came in from uh, external sources. So uh, my advisor, John Rogers, um, who's a uh, faculty at Northwestern University, uh, and this you know, work was done um, as part of a uh, scientific effort uh, at the university level, which um, you know is common to a lot of the work that I've been doing. Uh, but we just saw an, a lot of inbound interest. And um, you know, that sort of led to the framework that, look, maybe we should you know, incorporate this and uh, try to commercialize um, in the area of sports was interesting. But to Mike's point, you know, you're you're absolutely right. There's uh, a lot of uh, uh, commonalities between what uh, sports and fitness um, arenas are interested in today around personalization, around nutrition, health. Uh, and then if you look more clinically, 
there's diseases, rare diseases like cystic fibrosis, for example, kidney health, um, as well as even fatigue, um, frailty in elderly patients, um, all of which could leverage the same set of tools that we're developing here. And it really became um, uh, a, a problem solving effort around what do we pick first and um, working with uh, so working in the sports fitness domain has certain uh, attractions from a regulatory standpoint. Um, we're going after uh, a, a set of metrics that are important to athletes. And um, if you look down the road, we certainly wanted to keep open the lens around, you know, how do we think about cystic fibrosis where uh, newborns as well as uh, uh, young adults uh, alike uh, monitor their sweat chloride levels and their content uh, while they're taking certain medications, for example. Um, and so these are all very interesting uh, worlds all within one spectrum where the technology can make a difference. And for us, it's really important to figure out what was that first market. And um, as Mike, you just mentioned, it was definitely around uh, sports to start. There's money there. I mean, that's one of the things that uh, uh, was really impressive to us, that here is science tied to money, which produces a lot of people. And a lot of people produces a lot of information. So if a million folks are using Epicor, that's a million ongoing sets of data about exercise and uh, uh, hydration and coaching, levels of data way beyond what you could have gotten out of hospitals or out of a lab. And that data itself, along with the product, starts that process, we think, of transformation about the interplay between your body, the outside world, the medical system, care, and all of that. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think uh, as we think about where this type of technology could go, uh, we're thinking because it's so miniaturized, you can use it in the home without needing benchtop lab equipment, without needing centrifuges and things that you normally would use in the context of doing these types of measurements in your sweat and in your interstitial fluid. And, um, you know, the um, diabetes market has been a great example of how CGMs and other types of devices can start to integrate into your daily life. And uh, here, you know, the key is being non-invasive um, for sports, for certain consumer applications, it's very important uh, to have certain familiarity and uh, comfort with these types of devices. And, um, you know, there's a lot of biofluids you could tap into, saliva, interstitial fluid. We went with sweat as the first target, uh, a crying sweat to to be precise. And um, it's, uh, it's accessible, it's non-invasive, athletes uh, sweat a ton, and it's data that would otherwise be thrown away or wiped off your body with a towel. There's a wealth of information in there, and that's something that we could tap into. So where do you see it going from here with uh, Epicor? So you got one great partnership. A lot of people are gonna hear from you. This launches when, like five minutes from now or something like that, right? Yeah, early uh, 2021. Uh, February timeframe where we're coming out. It's already been announced and uh, it's already underway. So uh, it's very exciting for us. And, um, you know, it's a new product, uh, first of its kind. And, and uh, you know, being a tech uh, uh, nerd uh, when it comes to this stuff, it's great to see microfluidics, um, you know, come into a consumer health product. It's, you know, usually you think about microfluidics and point of care diagnostics that sit uh, in a lab somewhere. And, um, uh, you know, given the sign of the times, it's great to see some of this technology come outside of the lab into the home and, you know, being used outside. So all sports, will it move from sports into other, uh, uh, areas? Uh, where do you think it'll go from here? Yeah, I think, uh, so sports is key, uh, as, as uh, sports and fitness, uh, in the home, providing that level of personalization, uh, everyone's striving. And we've seen a lot of growth over the past several months uh, during the pandemic in other uh, avenues in sports and fitness, whether it's you know Pelotons or other Swift and other types of apps and uh, exercise regimens that are now being done in the home. Um, we think that's the sort of the beachhead. And then from there, um, 
you know, we're interested more broadly in nutrition and stress, and that's very relevant to a lot of the things that Nicole and um, um, I know Joyance and uh, the teams uh, on this call are very interested in. And um, we've uh, we've started down that journey as well. Um, stress biomarkers. Uh, there's been a lot of research that have been done, uh, but not so much on the side of commercialization. So you know, there's a lot of ways to tackle it galvanic skin response, bioimpedance. We're looking at it in the context of measuring specific biochemical markers like cortisol. Uh, so that's one key area. Uh, and then the other uh, adjacent area I'll just add is, um, you know, sports, athletes, dehydration, you know, key to all, all of the, 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 the athletes that we, we see uh, excited about this product. But it turns out industrial um, safety, worker safety, and uh, there's a ton of oil and gas construction, um, um, even mining underground, places where uh, people are actually working and under conditions where it's 120 degrees Fahrenheit. And um, wellness, health, dehydration are really important to track in those contexts as well. Uh, so it's a really... Uh, uh, much aligned with the way we think about things in the context of the um, quantified athlete, but how do you bring this to other uh, industries? And that, that's something we're very focused and excited about. Got it. So you mentioned the pandemic, and I'm curious. Uh, so here you have a technology that essentially allows your body to self-report on the state of your body. And we're in a world where a lot of people are anxious about the states of their body and have all kinds of trouble getting tests in the traditional system that let them know about what's going on. Uh, what's been the impact, if any, of COVID on you guys? And, and what do you think the impact has been on the universe of uh, next generation sensors, self-testing, that kind of thing? Right, yeah, there, there's been just uh, an enormous amount of activity and flurry of things, some of which are um, uh, tough to validate uh, as of yet. So uh, I, I think um, you know, just looking at the landscape of publications as well as um, various um, uh, reports that are being uh, covered in more of the media, um, a lot of specific markers um, have been identified as it relates to uh, COVID-19 and um, I would say, you know, there's a lot of noise. Um, I've been um, a, a part of a few publications that have been across um, a few different centers that have looked at wearable devices. And um, what we're finding out today is there's definitely an acceleration of, uh, uh, of curiosity and excitement to be able to deploy some, you know, commercial consumer products just to see if we could pick up certain uh, factors that could help, you know, early detection. Um, and then others of which um, could lead to, you know, complete uh, early um, preventative measures. Um, and, you know, I'm just sort of seeing these things happen. And uh, the direct impact it's had on Epicor is, um, you know, we're seeing a lot more activity in the home uh, around monitoring, um, uh, whether it's, you know, for, uh, it, for, you know, being able to track your health, nutrition, uh, things are going to play out and we'll see. But, um, uh, you know, what excites me is there's uh, a, a lot more focus on digital solutions that could be untethered. Um, and, you know, that's front and center when it comes to clinical trials. There's just a lot more push towards virtual clinical trials. And, you um, I think we'll see where it goes. For us, uh, it's an exciting time. We're trying to get our solutions out there to help um, you know, bridge the gap. If you're home, you can use these types of devices in ways that um, could help in inform you about your nutrition, your hydration, and, uh, and hopefully down the road, your health as well. Yeah, absolutely. And, and one of the things we believe at the fund, and one reason we got so excited about you and some of the other companies like you on the portfolio, is we've said for a long time that the worldwide network and the medical system used to end a long way away from you in the university, in the hospital. You have to have to go in, in my day, with your cards to do your computing or go in to the hospital to get the test. Mm -hmm. uh, 
and a little closer. So there's a blood pressure monitor on my desk. It's closer, but it's still not me. And the same thing's true. We're doing this through a notebook computer. It's right here on a phone next to me. That's but right. What we're seeing now is that the end of the worldwide network and the end point of the care system is me. It's on my body. It's in my body. There's no gap between the system and me. I am the endpoint. I'm the source of the data. I'm the recipient of the response to the data, uh, unmediated. And if you think about that, that's incredibly profound. That means that we're generating the data all the time mm -hmm. that produces the care for us, that produces uh, the experience we all have. Uh, huge increase in available data, huge increase in analyzable surface, and a transformed experience for the individuals. That's right. And, you know, what is critical to having this data is validation, 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 so that you can make sense um, and convince the FDA. And if you're launching even a consumer product, you have to go through those, even if you're not making medical claims. But, you know, a lot of our DNA and what we're seeing out there more and more now is having that Northwestern University background from uh, from Epicor's side, myself being uh, a faculty member there, um, Professor John Rogers, uh, we publish virtually everything we work on. It comes in stages. Um, and really key to that is what you just described, Mike. You got to collect this information, but then figure out ways working with clinical investigators to validate. And uh, that was a core piece of what we did with the, the the team at Gatorade, it's all based on scientific foundation publications that come out in the peer review. Uh, but then ultimately you do have to think about who do you partner with? Who do you collaborate with to get algorithms and various things uh, out there? So uh, that, that's really underneath all of this. It's uh, having that uh, university DNA uh, has been actually very key. And it's just a question of how do you funnel that into uh, building a translation worthy commercial system. So uh, I'll stop there.